Thank you very much, Guy. Uh, so now that we've seen the strategy and we've heard some amazing and ambitious um, uh, plans from our customers, it's time to connect this to the roadmap. So what can you do tomorrow that you cannot do today? Um, we want to be part of that, enabling that technology to help you run a smoother operations, to run more efficiently, more sustainably, and start paving the way towards an autonomous future. And the first thing I want to talk about there is Cognite's Atlas AI. So Atlas AI came together when we saw the very rapid rise of generative AI and the technology, and we paired that up with all of the stories and use cases and the feedback that we got from you. And we see that in industry, there are some very specific issues or challenges when deploying these modern AI technologies. And with Atlas AI, we, we aim to uh, address all of those concerns. And we want to do that through starting here. So the first thing we're launching this year is a low code agent builder. So there's a brand new workspace coming to Cognite Data Fusion in the product. And uh, you will be able then through a no code interface to build and to iterate and to tune your industrial agents, your new artificial employees, and build them straight into the product. Um, and to not get started uh, all by yourself, we will get you started faster through a library of agents that will be there as templates. So you can see examples um, of what other people have created and get you started on building your first agents. This library takes some very specific um, industry challenges that we've seen. These are specifically for industry and they have been shown and proven to have value through some of our most recent work with customers. But thirdly here, auto LLM, foundation models and AI infrastructure. So choosing um, and getting guidance to choose the right language models and to already be on an infrastructure um, that is already set up. So you don't have to think about it. Right where your data is, already you already have the language models available to you. And we want to get all foundational models across all foundational clouds uh, and all of the cloud providers available to you through a drop-down menu. Um, so you can start focusing on where you get the most value from. That's your expertise, your specific problems, and not have to worry about the accessibility of this. And with Auto LLM, we'll help you guide you towards selecting the right language models for the specific ones. So you can choose the most efficient ones, uh, the most proper ones that will help you solve that specific problem. Lastly, um, automate complex industry relevant tasks. So once you've built uh, and you've set up and you've tested your different agents, you want to deploy them into the real world. And through the help of this, um, up in the right hand corner in your agent builder, there's a click and with one click, you can then deploy your agents into the places where your users can get used to them in instantly. Um, so the, the agents are set up with a set of tools, which means that they can analyze, they can help you visualize, they can help you work through and get access to the data that you need in order for you to act. And we can also start automating workflows through these agents so you get the maximum out of those agents. And coming, this is all, and all the other things I'm talking about now is going to be launched this year. This is a short-term roadmap. I want to make these things available to you as soon as possible. Also coming next year, you will be able to launch um, your agents through APIs and they're available through APIs. So if you have uh, your own solutions built out uh, or if you have third party solutions who wants to consume these agents, you can do that already next year. And that is also to empower this open industrial ecosystem um, where the solution is in where all these things come together. Did I? So, but how are you as customers in the industry, 
Or how are you going to be able to choose the right models? Um, benchmarks exist, but they are very general. And they can uh, tell you a lot about the performance on different language models, but they don't understand industry. So one more thing we would like to announce today is um, an industry-first guidance report for language models in the industry. Um, so every week a new model comes out. There's constant innovation going on. Um, and the benchmarks that already are out there, they fail to capture the complexities of industrial operations where precision, where safety, and domain expertise is critical. So we benchmark all of these language models that we get access to uh, on industrial use cases using industrial data. And we will be putting out this report regularly and we'll have updates to it as new models come in or as new versions of them come out. Uh, and the first report will actually launch later this month. All right, second point. So I know all of you have built great proof of concepts. You've done a lot of one-offs and you've shown a lot of technologies. But we know everyone in this room knows that the hard part about this is getting things to scale. It's expensive, it's a lot of manual work, and for many it's a lot of linear, uh, linear effort in order to get something from working at your first site or working with the first prototype and getting it all the way to scale. Um, in order to do this, you also typically need um, very skilled people. They are expensive, they're hard to get a hold of, and again, humans also then scale linearly. So we need to be able to reduce the friction between first getting started very quickly and then scale this across all of your sites, all of your plants, uh, and all of your different use cases and all of your operations. So in our roadmap, we are committed to strengthening more and more around getting data ops to scale. Number one, uh, which is obvious for us, but it's around data liberation. So um, setting up uh, from scratch a new project, this is about getting started faster. Um, setting up your data, uh, setting up uh, a project, setting up your locations, connecting to the different data sources, and letting the user interface guide you through it today. Uh, and this is where breaking the silos start. Our second point is through contextualization. Contextualization is the art of creating meaningful connections between different types of data, between billions of data points. And we all know that that can be a challenge to do through a user interface. And it's been a challenge for us too. And in order, when you start talking about massive scale, we know that a lot of us, we tend to have to go to code and spend a lot of time uh, building out very complex pipelines. Um, coming next year, we're pulling more and more of that capability into a refreshed user interface where you should be able to handle and set up contextualization at scale um, through the user interface. There is also improvements coming to all of our contextualization services um, that makes them easier, uh, more detailed, and also extracting more data out of the, da out of the information that's coming through from structured and unstructured data sources. Third point on data modeling. Um, again, um, a lot of orchestration and data modeling capabilities happens out there. And when we get to a certain amount of uh, scale, we use the APIs, we use software, we use code in order to scale. Um, we're launching now um, a data workbench where you can set up your data pipelines from connectors through contextualization through functions um, and simulators, and then, and then uh, send that data straight into a, a standard data model into the user interface. You'll preview the data. Uh, you'll be able to work with it through data ops, the continuous evolvement. So as your business needs evolve, your data also needs to evolve. Last point is on data activation and automation. So an example you see 
behind me here, which is very cool, is that um, historically we've been able to extract and identify equipment and tags and connect that data. So when you click on an interactive diagram, you'll get the 3D models, the sensors, uh, you get documents, you get maintenance history, you get all of the data that you've connected to it. We're now extracting even more data out of the PNIDs and helping you do more automation. So what's highlighted behind me is a one-click ask to isolate the tank that you see behind me. We've extracted all of the valves, all of the lines, all of the symbols, and identify them. And it finds automatically the upstream and downstream valves. It searches its way out through the knowledge graphs and then automates your isolation plan. This is just one of the examples that's possible through automation um, once you start to get to scale on your data. Um, so now I'd like to welcome on stage someone who is a forward-looking company who is looking at how do they scale their data operations. So, Karen Shoskowski. Good morning, everyone. So, my name is Karen Shoskowski. I am a delivery lead in LKBP. Um, and you heard this morning from Paul Doyle, our CDO, talking about how we have so much uh, great ambitions and how we're going to do this forward. So I decided to bring you a case that we just tested two months ago together with Cognite and Microsoft to see how we can make these ambitions really come uh, lives as soon as possible. So um, can you please just start the movie? All right, so our offshore operations today are still very much dependent on people and reliant on manual operations to be uh, completed. But that's not where we're going and that's not the reality as soon as 2027 as you heard from Paula. So we're starting to work uh, on a lot of technologies that we're going to be reliant to have more unmanned platforms and remotely operated uh, operations. So out of these spaces that we're going to have with very few people, we need to make sure that we can test these things and see if everything is working before we can actually go there because it's going to be unmanned if everything is safe. At the same time, we have remote operated controls so we can have two people just actually doing all of these things offshore. So we decided to do, uh, we need technologies like robotics and AI. And we did a test in a robot garden, as you see here in Oslo, where we put Spot, the robot dog, to go around collecting data through several, several machines. And in this specific test, we wanted to test vibrations from pipe. Basically, vibrations offshore, they can be potential problem as if it goes a bit too much or too under certain thresholds and as much. So we decided to test, so collect data using video and an acoustic camera to try and find out what is the uh, optimal uh, threshold before something actually happens. So we're trying, we're looking for abnormalities, abnormalities before they actually happen. So we collected all of this data, contextualized in CDF to the actual garden that we have there in, in uh, Oslo, and we see this vibration happening. So then that's the point where we can actually use AI. And we used in this case, GPT-4 vision. So all of these images we're collecting here to really combine that together with the pipe and the acoustic to find the best uh, way to get this data contextualized. From then we created a time series and now we have a map that we can really pinpoint together and put together of what is happening with noise with that particular location and pipe to that location itself. So we can try and see where problems might become problems before they actually become problems and we can solve them before they do. And so we put it all together, as you see here, everything contextualized as you heard from the guys before, but we also don't want to be stuck and glued to a screen looking for where is this thing, where is this problem. Right. So in this case, we use the dashboard to try and visualize what noise would look like. But in reality, we would like to have this actually as part of a digital twin, some sort of a 3D model. In this case, so you see here the actual, this is the actual pipe you're seeing there from the, the garden. And we decided that, OK, now I have all of this information available, but our technicians are still looking for data everywhere to try and solve this. So we created an, a Teams bot agent to actually use all of the data we collected 
also in relation to work orders from SAP. So in this case, we, we actually waste so much time looking for data everywhere, right? So we have people looking for data constantly, but we don't want that. We want the solution to be already available. So we have all of this data together. We look for the work orders to say, what is this pipe? What is this thing? And has this potential problem happened before? So now I have this data uh, planned out and I can see what are the potential solutions that I have. So we put this together, like large language models, and now we can actually see uh, our technicians interacting with that data and asking that bot for more details and information. So not only, not only we get this, you have a potential problem, we also have, this is the potential solution for you. So we have two ways of using AI here that combined have a full flow of uh, system working together with people offshore and onshore. So that's really what I had to show you guys today. It's a very cool uh, little example, but this is how in RKVP we're planning and putting things together using the contextualization. So thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Um, it is inspiring to see all the different things that our customers do with our product that we couldn't even imagine. Um, last point on our roadmap is um, what we believe is the most important thing for an autonomous future is that it's part of an open ecosystem. The openness has been a founding principle in Cognite and talking to our customers or talking about how to get to an autonomous future, the only way to get there is through open standards, through open data, open interfaces and interoperability between them. Um, and we want to do our part in fueling that ecosystem. So starting first with uh, huge investments that we've done in, in data modeling capabilities in order for you to be able to describe your industrial reality the way it is today through an industrial knowledge graph. Starting just in the last uh, few months, we've started to deploy standard out-of-the-box data models um, that have all of the core, com all of the core concepts uh, of your industry ready and they are extendable. They're also extendable then into open standards. And we do believe there's not one data model to rule them all. Um, the, the future of data modeling is, is, is open um, and openness must be a founding principles. The data modeling capabilities allows you then to model the data according to open, open standards, open principles, so that both you can, can use and share them, but you can also then have interoperability between you, your suppliers and your partners. The second point is about simulators. So industrial simulators are at the heart of the value flow through your operations. They so simulate uh, through physics based and through machine learning based and, and, uh, and first principles uh, simulators. Um, traditionally, each of the simulator vendors have then wanted to keep you within their ecosystem. Um, what we offer is an agnostic way to connect those different in, um, ecosystems through data. Um, and we come pre-ship with a lot of connectors to one of the most used simulators out there. In addition, there is a toolkit and guidance uh, and frameworks for you to build and extend those into other simulators as well. The automation that happens here drastically reduces by like two thirds of the pre-processing you have to do to run those simulators. It reduces the, we automate the data quality checks and the sanity of those and post-process a lot of data and just make it available, contextualize it back to your uh, equipment and to your processes and make that data available to the decision makers. Um, customers that we've had have gone from running a simulator once per month to running it multiple times per day, increasing the resolution of the, the data that they use to take operational decisions every day. Third one, marketplace. Um, more and more templatized, out-of-the-box solutions. Uh, easier to deploy, easier to update, 
easier to manage over time, and also allowing third parties and partners to build plugins um, and uh, extensions that further amplify the ecosystem of solutions that comes together. We've seen, as Guy has shown you, an explosion in third-party solutions being built on top of CDF, and we will see that's a continuing trend. Um, and the marketplace will also then help us extend that, and also that it comes with more and more out-of-the-box templates ready to be used and ready to be extended uh, solutions by all of you. And the fourth, which was just launched, it's Cognite Embedded. So building on top of Cognite Data Fusion, we already have pioneers like SLB, like Rockwell and Pinnacle and others who have already accelerated their time to value by building on top of CDF, not having to first do build a modern industrial data platform and then build the solutions that drive the, their specific knowledge, their specific domain expertise and value. Um, and uh, with Cognite Embedded, you have already a data foundation based on open standards in an open ecosystem with open APIs, software development kits and tooling and training in the academy. That's all available to, to accelerate the time to value so you can focus on the unique value that you bring to your customers. So this morning, we've heard from uh, incredible customer stories, inspiring uh, stories about how they want to get uh, to an autonomous future. There are visionaries in a very challenging time and they're painting an ambitious picture for the future. So uh, my ask for you is, is two things at the, the end of this keynote. Uh, number one, we have breakout sessions uh, all out today and tomorrow where you will find great customer stories. And you will also find the things we've talked about to here today being demoed, uh, being shown live, and being shown with real case use cases. So find the, find the breakout sessions that you're most interested in and get to them. And uh, second of all, in the Cognite Lounge uh, over here, we have our booths where you can also talk to the product people and you can connect with other uh, colleagues from the industry and see uh, real world examples and demos and, and have conversations with us. So thank you everyone and enjoy this day of impact.